So one of my goals this year was to not buy any new books. It was to shop my shelves or the library. It's already January and I won't be able to pick up the stock of books that I have. But anyway, I am losing daylight so let's get started. So the first book I picked up, I wish I could remember who had it. It might have been Homeschooling on a Wing and a Prayer. Here's her new channel name because I don't remember. It's like Crabby Cat and Coffee Chat, I think. I think she's the one that had this and I love all things pirates. My son and I are, yeah, my son had a pirate theme party. And so I saw this and I went and I found a secondhand copy, I think for $3.99 shipped. And so this is um, Real Pirates, the untold story of the Wida from Slave Ship to Pirate Shop. And it's done by National Geographic and it's got some beautiful illustrations. So I picked that up. We are going to love that one. Okay, if I can remember if this was thrift books or thrift store, I will tell you. This one was thrift store, The Girl Who Married a Lion and Other Tales from Africa by Alexander McCall Smith, who wrote the ladies' number one detective story. And I, I'm i so glad I picked this up because I think we're going to be needing a lot of this next year when we start our history, world history again. And this was a dollar. And I'm really looking forward to that one. I, I really like the ladies' number one detective agency. Okay, um, this is another thrift store. 101 Things You Didn't Know About Jane Austen. The Truth About the World's Most Intriguing Literary Heroine. This was a dollar. Okay, who was the Irishman who stole Jane Austen's heart? Was their fair doomed? Which Austen heroine most resembles the author himself? Who were the real Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy? Why did Jane never marry? What were her last words? So, looking forward to that. Again, another, this was the library find. Leo Tolstoy, The Death of Ivan. And I thought this would work really great for um, one of the challenges I have for this month. So that was the library. This is why I went into the thrift store. Our thrift store moved. I happened to check it out. And then um, I saw this book and I was like, oh, that looks interesting, but never mind. And then I saw Emily from Arc Schooling posted about it. And then I went back and got it because it was a dollar. Everyone Brave is Forgiven and it's about World War II and pretty much that's all I can tell you. I'm just really looking forward to reading it. Um, she had great, she, had, she was raving about it. So, okay, and oh, this was another. So this was another one and this is The Aviator's Wife and I've, I had it written down as something I really wanted and then I found it for 50 cents. So I picked it up. But um, one of, on one of the book challenges that I have, it is a true crime challenge. So you need to read a true crime book. And I don't like horror. So I was kind of afraid about this. It's one reason why I like um, reading fictional mysteries is because it's fiction. So I'm like, oh, but it didn't really happen. So reading true crime, I think, is going to be a little bit difficult. Um, but I ended up picking this one. This is Vanished, and it is um, on a summer night in, in August 2001, Jan Jana Carpenter Cocklet, daughter of former California Senator State Paul Carpenter, came home from an uh, Eric Clampton concert, went inside her house, and was never seen again. So, um, California Senator and daughter go missing in California. I'm going to try that. Then this next stack, I believe, is all thrift books. And it started with needing a book for the boy that I assigned, um, or the book that I have in my school. I assigned him a read, uh, Swift Rivers by Cordelia Meggs, and he could not get through it. It was just really hard for him to read, so I decided to switch that one out. And we ended up getting Heart of a Samurai. And this is about one of the first Japanese that came over to America and I think in 1841. So I will be giving him this book instead. Hopefully I can read it before I give it to him. He's finishing up another one and then he'll take on this. So it is a Newbery honor. That should say something, right? Okay, I'm just going to start going through this thing. Okay, so because of the view from Saturday, I just read that and enjoyed it. I picked up this one. Jennifer Hecate Macbeth William McKinley and to me Elizabeth 
and Newberry Honor Book. So I decided I wanted to read more by her. She also did the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil. I want to say Rathbone, but I think Basil Rathbone is from Sherlock, so I don't remember. But anyway, I wanted to read that one, and it was... Well, you know what happens. You just... Everything starts spiraling out of control. I have the Cory Bell Hollister series. If you love, love The Little House on the Prairie, you will absolutely adore the Cory Bell Hollister series for adults. And it's... And... Gray Fox is her brother's story. And that's all I'm going to tell you about that because I think you should go and pick up the series. So if you like Christian fiction and you like Little House on the Prairie, go pick up the Cory Bell Hollister series by Michael Phillips and the first ones are also by Judith Pella. And I didn't have Gray Fox. Okay, Listening for Lions, Gloria Wellhan, winner of the National Book Award. She is the one that wrote one of my favorite books, um, Homeless Bird. I thought that was a great, great book. And so um, when I was looking ahead for what we are going to need this coming year in our, in our history, this came up and so I picked this up. That's all I can tell you. As you can see, I have a lot of reading ahead of me. For the um, French Revolution, I have... Betsy and the Emperor. This was um, very well talked about, especially in the homeschooling circles. And so I think I want to give this to my daughter, uh, my daughter, my sister, and for her independent reads. And I kind of want to read ahead and tell me more about that. So a lot of these books I really don't know too much about, but I got them based off of um, others' recommendations. Everybody talks about this book, and I don't actually own it. And I keep looking for it, but I don't actually own it. And so I picked it up to do with my son because I am starting to put books aside for April when he turns six and he'll kind of formally start school. So because I got that one, I also got, of course, every Charlotte Mason needs this person, this book, right? Um, it's, it's really frustrating the publishers that do these books because they don't do a great job. And it's just cheap quality. I don't necessarily recommend it, but it was the only way I could really get this, so that's that's why I did that. Um, I am, again, looking for stuff for it next year, and I was trying to find more on this dude, and again, I can't tell you much about it, but I was looking for stuff, and so I came across this one, and I really enjoyed learning more about him in our American history, so I thought that would be something fun to do um, later on. And Old Hickory. Um, I think this is one that I found at the library one time. I didn't get to finish it and I didn't see it the other day. Um, but this would be a really great older grade book to read. It's definitely more heavy content but it is what I would call a loving book and so I'm picking that up okay um this one I saw mama shoes reviews highly recommend it and it looks so cute and so I got it and I'm so glad I did it is so sweet and especially now that the ducks and geese are kind of flying over I'm going to do that with my children and my light is literally going so let's try to hurry this up I picked up a copy of one Yanni Wonder Knows I love this book this is by Margaret D'Angeli who did Door on the Wall that a lot of people know much about, but um, don't forget Yanni Wonder Nose. He is your typical boy. He's always forgetting something, and he kind of gets a opportunity to kind of prove himself, and he does it so well. So seriously, if you can't purchase this because I know it's out of print, um, no, actually it's not. It's not out of print. But definitely try to get a secondhand copy somehow, some way, and read it. This was one that we were contemplating giving the boy instead of um, The Last Samurai. This would have been another one, um, but I ended up doing this one. Uh, this one has, I think, a little bit um, more depth than I think the story of that other one is. Um, I have been dying to read this, and I don't know why I got it now. I, I don't remember putting it in my cart, but I know it's one that I have been wanting to read 
So there we go, Galileo's Daughter by Deva Sobel. Again, for the upcoming thing, this is, happens in Ireland during the potato drought or potato infestation, something like that. And this is Nora Ryan's song. Um, again, by Gloria Wellhen. This one is Chuju's House. This one, again, I believe I got to go with, yep. Yeah, um, 1800, 13 year old Pierre Lapage never dreams he'll be leaving Montreal to paddle. So now we've got some Canada history that I picked up. All right, this one, Witch Hunt, it happened in Salem Village. I don't remember why I heard about this or what, but I ended up picking it up because I thought it would work well for the Salem Witch Trial um, stuff. Okay, Beethoven's Tent, a Frank Ryan mystery. I could have borrowed this from the library, but to be honest, it looks so good, so I ended up um, purchasing it, and I think I will enjoy it. And once I'm done enjoying it, I think my son will. I, Juan de Paresia, par I cannot say it, but he is an artist, and I believe it was Sharon from Life of a Tribe that first recommended this, and so when I saw it, I was like, oh yes, I would like to do him, so let's pick him up. And I think the last of my light is gone, but I have one more book and I paid full price for it. And that was The Life-Giving Table, Nurturing Faith Through Feasting One Meal at a Time by Sally Clarkson. And that's all I'm going to say about this because it will be featured in another video. Sure.